Hi everyone, Janie here, and I was just getting ready to make some cards with these backgrounds that I stamped out, and I thought I would share it with you. So, we don't always have papers that match what we want to do, and you can always create your own backgrounds or your own papers just by using some inks and some stamps, which is just what I did here. So, I love these wood grain backgrounds so much and they're going to go perfect with the images that I actually have already stamped and colored to go on them and the wood grain ones I did with this Globeland um, stamp set that has one two three four five six seven pieces to it you can use these individually you can use them all together you can use some of them and not all of them I mean there's so many possibilities with this and I love it and I love wood grain backgrounds so that's what I used for these this one I stamped on craft color cardstock and used gathered twigs and then I did a little you know inking around the edges on that and on this one I stamped it with pumice stone and then I used antique linen to just do a little inking around the edges on this one as well so this one I was kind of going for just kind of a whitewashed fence and this one was definitely the wood grain look and then I wanted another one that had the colors in it that I needed and it just so happens that these two colors um, this one is mowed lawn and this one is seedless preserves and those seem to be the colors that I was going to need and so I used this stamp set also from Globeland and this is a really nice Christian inspirational set but it also had these flowers right here and some leaves right here and that is what I used to make this background so it's really easy to make your own backgrounds like I said just you can use your stamps and your inks you can stamp it in a design like this or just in a a pattern so many possibilities but now that I've got these done I'm gonna go make some cards okay I got together the papers that I want to use and the cutting die that I'll be using and I also use the stitched rectangle die to cut the center out of the paper that I'm using for the bottom layer and if you're not familiar with the reason why I do this it's a paper saving technique that I like to use because no one is going to see that once the card is made and next I'm gluing my top layer over that and for this aperture technique it's really important that you cover a lot of space on the back with glue so that when the aperture is cut out there won't be any loose edges another option would be to use a spray adhesive or several rows of double-sided tape and now that I have that glued on I'm going to use that round cutting die to cut the opening and by the way that's another good reason for using that paper saving technique I showed you earlier because that'll be just one less layer that the die has to cut through and I've chosen to put a layer of pattern paper on the inside but that can also just be left white depending on the look you're going for and what you're putting on the inside now for the piece that's going on the inside I stamped and heat embossed the floral image and sentiment from the Globeland Christian stamp set and you might notice that it is the same floral stamp that I used for the front of the card and I die cut it in two different sizes because I wasn't sure which one I was going to use and I colored them with my Ohuhu colored pencils and now to adhere that to the inside of the card and to get it in the perfect spot all I have to do is position it through the opening on the front of the card and when doing that it's important to make sure that it is centered so that the card will open and close without any problems and that everything is straight and even though I think it looks perfect and I could have stopped there I decided to add some little flowers in the corners and a butterfly when adding something like the butterfly you want to make sure that it's not in the way of opening and closing the card and here is the finished card and I think it came out so beautiful
Here are the papers that I'm using for the next card, and I'm using one of the pieces that I used the wood grain stamp on. So I just wanted to take a minute to show you the problem that my camera has with colors. If I adjust it so that the green is the right color, then the pink looks orange. And if I adjust it so that the pink is the right color, then the green is all wrong. But I'll have better pictures at the end of the video. So this card is pretty basic, and as you saw, I used my paper saving technique, and the pieces that are cut out can be used on another card. And I'm just gluing those layers onto my card base. Now, before I put the top layer on, I'm adding some bright pink gingham ribbon that matches the bright pink layer of the card. And I'm just adhering that with double-sided tape and wrapping it around the back so that there aren't any raw edges showing. Of course, you could always use glue, and you can always cut the edges if you prefer, but this is just my preference. And now that that's done, I'm going to glue it on top of the other layers. So to decorate the top of the card, I'm using this cow stamp set from Globeland, and I have stamped and heat embossed two of the images. One is for this card, and one is for the tag that I'm making next, and for those I also used my Ohuhu colored pencils, and I only colored the flowers. I absolutely love cows, and I think these are so cute. Well, it took me a while, but I finally decided that I wanted to position that in the center of the card, and then I added a bow and some flowers to finish it off, and I think it is absolutely adorable. Okay, here are the papers and dies that I am going to be using for this tag, and as you can see, I'm using one of the papers that I stamped with the wood grain stamp set. And you can also see that the tag die is longer than the paper, but that's not going to be a problem, as you will see. And here are all of my tag pieces cut out, and as you can see, I glued two pieces together and then trimmed the bottom off so that both sides match up. And then I'm using my brand new Creative Crafts Products Corner Punch that I got from Craft Stash. By rounding the corners, no one will ever know that that tag was supposed to be longer. And next, I'm using Distress Ink and Gathered Twigs, and I'm going to be inking the edges of the tag, both front and back. And I love inking the edges, but of course it's not necessary, but I really like the look. In this case, I think it goes perfect with the wood grain look. And then I stamp the smaller tag with the Sending Good Vibes stamp set from Close to My Heart and glue that to the back of the tag. And on the front of the tag, I used the other cow image that I had stamped and colored, and I glued that on. I actually thought of popping that up for a little dimension, but I didn't. And I added some flowers and a black and white gingham ribbon, and that is how easy it was to make that cute tag. And here are some better pictures of these projects, and I just wanted to share with you how easy it is to make a variety of projects and hopefully give you a little inspiration just in case you needed it. Below in the description box, I'll have links to the stamps that I used today, as well as a discount code for Globeland should you decide to shop there. And if you've never shopped there, I hope you check them out because they have some pretty amazing prices for those of us that can't spend an arm and a leg on craft supplies. Thank you all so much for stopping by, and happy crafting everyone. Bye-bye.